the digital age, our systems still perpetuate bias, inequality, and violence in the lives of women and girls. Technological progress is outpacing progress towards gender equality. This is not progress. On this International Women's Day, we make four calls. 1. Remove all barriers to access the digital world. 2. Educate and train women and girls in STEM. 3. Enable women to create tech that meets their needs. 4. Eliminate online gender-based violence. Today we power on to create an equal digital future for all. Last March 8, 2023, the United Nations celebrated the International Women's Day with the theme, Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. In the opening part, this question was presented on the screen. Do technology and innovation benefit women and men equally? And the answer was, no. They improve quality of life and create opportunities for many but there is a glitch in the system. In the digital age our systems still perpetuate bias, inequality, and violence in the lives of women and girls. Technological progress is outpacing progress towards gender equality. This is not progress. Our first reaction from the Christian community, gender equality, in its purest, uncorrupted and civilized context, is basically and naturally confined to, and between men and women, or boys and girls only. Not including the scientifically and superficially transformed genders, we know as the third or fourth sex generation. We must not corrupt, distort, or twist the true and natural essence of gender identities and their equality for that matter. Our second reaction from the Christian community. Sad to say that in reality, faked women and gays are a disgrace to the instinct femininity of women and girls, going so far as to actually rival real wives with their husbands or real girls with their boyfriends. This is so true in many liberal countries in America, Europe and in Asia, to include the Philippines. You may want to see some intriguing episodes of Face to Face, or Face the People shows on TV5 via YouTube to check the real problems caused by faked women in Filipino couples and families. Our third reaction from the Christian community. In the biblical perspective particularly in Genesis 2.18-23, the Lord God created the first woman out of one of Adam's ribs, that the man finally found a helper, not a slave suitable for him or just right for him to help him govern God's earthly creation. And Adam called her woman because she was taken from man. God designed Eve to be a suitable helper or kenegdoeza in the original Hebrew word to help the first man to work and keep the Garden of Eden. She was never created to be a slave of Adam nor be treated as an inferior creation than him. In fact, the word Ezra or helper indicates a military figure, a sustainer, a provider, a protector and a stronger partner. But this refers only to the woman whom God created and to every woman she would bear thereafter. And not to fake women belonging to the LGBTQ community.
Our fourth reaction based on world history. In the world's history, U.S. Constitution in 1789 ratified the term electorate as persons, people, and electors, allowing the interpretation of those beings to include both men and women. Meaning, the women in America could now vote, nullifying the 1777 national law which earlier took away women's right to vote. As a result, women begun to exercise their rights to get engaged in various political, social, economic developmental undertakings by the state. These women who fought for their rights were actual and real women by biological gender. However, the state today, eventually and fairly recognizes all kinds of women with other gender preferences but still fall under the category of women. Our fifth reaction based on the Philippine history. In Philippine history, on September 17, 1937, women's suffrage was legalized after the required threshold for the plebiscite of 300,000 yes votes was surpassed. 447,725 women affirmed their aspiration to vote, against the 33,307 no votes. The Philippines was one of the first Asian countries to allow this kind of rights for women. Take note, that only women according to their natural descent were recognized then as women, and not the modern-day, Transformers Decepticons. Our sixth reaction based on the Philippine Constitution. In the Philippine Constitution, Article 2 Declaration of Principles and State Policies. Section 14. The state recognizes the role of women in nation building, and shall ensure the fundamental equality before the law between men and women. Take note again, that the context of the word, women, in the constitution clearly refers to the natural born women, and not a second type nor a third type of women. And all women by biological descent were given, equal rights, with men in nation building as well as, equal rights, in parenting and family matters. This will be explained on the next segment, the Family Code of the Philippines. Our seventh reaction based on the Family Code of the Philippines. Executive Order No. 209, Series of 1987, Approving the Family Code of the Philippines. Marriage is a special contract of permanent union between a man and a woman, entered into in accordance with law for the establishment of conjugal and family life. It is the foundation of the family and an inviolable social institution. The union described herein, by natural sense, and without doubt, is clearly between a man and a woman, not between man and man, nor of a woman with another woman. Therefore allowing same-sex marriage is evidently a profaning or desecration against the sanctity and the very essence of marriage which was instituted by God himself from the beginning or from the days of creation in the book of Genesis. The Family Code of the Philippines was enacted in 1987 to attune the legal framework on marriage and family relations to contemporary developments and trends, thereby ensuring women's equal rights in said framework. In case of same-sex marriage, who would stand as the legal husband or the legal wife when both parties belong to the same gender? That's absolutely absurd, and can never receive a blessing from God above who originally designed marriage between a man and a woman. You have just watched and read the various reactions or comments on the issue of gender equality from Bible perspective, from the world and Philippine history, from the Philippine Constitution, and the Family Code of the Philippines, to help us analyze the true meaning and essence of this very important subject. Now, it's up to you and to the concerned authorities, whether you are going to accept the, pure and simple, meaning of gender equality between a man and a woman, or the, perverted and corrupt, version of the LGBTQ community. May God preserve the integrity and inviolability of women's femininity. May God bless all women who fear Him and love Him. Happy International Women's Month.